Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, welcome to Charmouth on the British Cheese Weekender with myself, Archie from Black Cow, and Mark Hicks, who's going to um, show us about what to do with our Black Cow Deluxe Cheddar. So years ago, I sort of started reviving the fondue, <laughs> the classic fondue. <clears throat> and of course, when Black Cow came about, you know, what better thing than some of that, some of that, some double cream to make a fondue. Mm. So it's pretty simple. And we've done it in various ways. You know, in asparagus season, we've done the asparagus, the asparagus as the sort of dip. But as we're Dorset boys, then the Dorset knob is the perfect thing to dip into your fondue. And it's very close to the classic sort of bit chunks of bread. Mm. So that's going to be what we're going to be dipping into our fondue. So we're going to start off with double cream. And this is dead, dead simple, really, by the way. So we're going to bring some double cream to the boil. And we're going to simmer it until it's kind of reduced by about a third. Right. In the meantime, we're going to grate some black cow cheddar. Take the black stuff off. They're a funny thing, the native knob, aren't they? Oh uh, yes. Some people don't understand them at all. No. Some people love them. I was brought up on them as a kid. When I used to go to the local nightclub, <coughs> my grandmother used to always leave out a Stilton, Branston pickle and Dorset knobs. Was that Da Vinci's? Uh, well, sometimes it was Da Vinci's, other times it was Westmead nightclub. Oh right. And um, you can imagine the mess in the morning. Yeah. Especially if crew cone had been down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, the old uh, Dorset knobs have fond memories. So that's nearly 200 grams of cheese. Yeah. So the idea of the reducing the cream is so that we get a lovely dipping <coughs> consistency. We're going to add some pepper to that so that it infuses nicely. It's also going to have some black cow vodka in it. Very good. Why not? And we're going to make a drink to go with the fondue. So I suppose classically in the land of fondue, Scandinavia and everywhere, they would drink little snaps. But uh, what we're going to make is a martini, but with one of my favourite larder ingredients, pickled walnuts. Yeah. Uh, we, we sort of messed around with this the other day, didn't we, Arch? Yeah. So... Uh, you are a devotee of pickled walnuts, aren't you? They are oh, I, I think they're fantastic. I mean, they're, they are one of those delicious things that should be in everyone's larder. You know, we're going to put that in the bottom of the glass. Right. You could put it on a fancy cocktail stick. Might even do that, Arch. Right. If I can find one in my larder. What have we got in here? We've got all sorts of stuff. No fancy cocktail sticks. Should we use a little wooden skewer? Wooden skewer looks good. So the... Is it, I mean, it's quite a, it's, it's quite a good um, substitute for an olive, really, in a way, doesn't it? Well, it does similar things, but completely different. That was the idea, really, apart from boiling the cream over, but to save it just to the last oh, minute. Either. The good thing with these uh, fisher pakel cookers is they're very sensitive to... People like myself getting distracted and boring things over. <laughs> Having a drink. 
So that's simmering away nicely, cheese is ready. So for the, for the martini, I'm gonna put some of the juice, which, although it's a pickling liquid, <coughs> you know, if you're making a dirty martini, you'd add a little bit of this, but I think this serves two purposes. It's like the brine from the olives mm -hmm. and the vermouth. We're not gonna add any vermouth because you try that, it's quite sweet. It's lovely. So, and also it has that, the, the vinegariness has the same, does it a similar thing that the fortified wine does in a yeah, way, isn't it? Yeah. So this is something just to keep ourselves occupied. Yes. Whilst the cream is reducing and we're making the fondue. So in with our black cow vodka. Got enough in there? Yeah. Give that a little shake up. Uh. <coughs> Something to sip on. If I was thinking, if I think of one person and pickled walnuts, it's you, my dear. And I think really, it's this particular drink's begging to be called a martini because yeah. I don't know anyone else who makes martinis with pickled walnuts. So we've been tossing a few names around, yeah. but you know, it's Cheers. a very nice thing. And I think whiz great. With the cheese, I think it's really a nice thing to drink. Simmering away nicely. Just needs to reduce it a little bit more. When was the last time you had a fondue, Archie? Hmm. Well, yeah, well, we, you know, since, I mean, we do have them quite regularly at the distillery, to be honest. Mm. Probably before Christmas, I mm. think. But we like a fondue. And they're, they're a really good communal thing, aren't they? They're, yeah. they're almost like, a, they're, if you're not going to have something to eat, it's always good to eat some, a little bit of something when you're drinking. Yeah, yeah. And it's a fun communal thing. And now COVID's over, people should be... Yeah, I think so. Doing a bit more communal eating again. Now, there's a way to open Dorset Knobs. A bit like an oyster, really. So it's, it's that sort of process of inserting your knife in, giving it a gentle twist. Otherwise, it's a right, I've seen, yeah. I mean, I've done it myself when I was a kid, coming back from the nightclub. You know, thousand pieces of Dorset Knobs down the side of it. <laughs> Chair and everywhere. Well, they're very dry, aren't they? They've, they've, they've got zero moisture in them. Mm. But yeah. just a gentle little twist. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand Dorset Knobs. I've had to sort of wean quite a few people onto Dorset Knobs over the years, you know, even, you know, well respected food writers. And the secret, really, if you're going to eat your mouth of Dorset knob, is plenty of butter, mm. a good cheese, mm. white or blue. Mm. My favourite thing is actually Branston pickle to eat with them. But, and then that's just perfect. So we're going to then cut each half into half again. Well, there's sort of a great thing to put flavour and stuff on, aren't they? Mm. Like a platform. So these are going to be dip into the fondue. You find it lighter, don't you? I've got one ready to go out. Be prepared. Like that for you. So we're going <clears> to. <throat> Whisk, we'll stay with our cheese.
Mustn't forget the vodka. Don't, yeah. As little or as much as you want. I think it's really good if you don't put too much, I mean, you know saying, but you don't want too much of it. Jason likes a lot in his vodka and his fondue. Of course he would. Yeah, you don't worry about that. And a lot in his glass to drink with it. Yes. So tell us a little bit about Black Cow Vodka, Arch, for those who... <coughs> well, it's the only pure, only pure milk vodka in the world, <coughs> and uh, everything in this bottle comes from grass grazed cow's milk. Nothing else, not even water's added. And what happens is we take our milk to the dairy and we split it into curds and whey, and the curds make Black Cow Deluxe Cheddar, and what's left over, the whey, which is typically almost like an agricultural byproduct, but a fantastic source of sugar, we make a milky beer with. And then we distill that beer and we end up with a pure milk vodka, a glorious 40% alcohol vodka that we, we think of as really the smoothest vodka in the world. I'm going to a bit more cheese. Well, that's my recipe. Recipes are there to be adapted and there's no harm in adding a bit more cheese. Is there? Especially we've got plenty on our doorsteps. Plenty on our doorsteps. So that's thickened up nicely. If you haven't got a fondue burner in the back of your cupboard from the 1970s, <laughs> then you could just put it in a, a nice little bowl. Yeah, really. And uh, you know, in, in this time of year, asparagus season, you know, you could have a mixture of Dorset knobs and asparagus. Mm. Why not? A bit arch. Thank you very much. Mm. And the thing that's always fascinated me with the pickled walnuts is that Opies are the only people that actually do pickled walnuts. Yeah. And they're very consistent. You know, I'm never, I never, I always have a panic if I can't find a pickled walnut in my larder. Or, They are, they, they are pretty you could unique. dip the old pickled walnut in there if you want. You could, you could give it a go. But there's all sorts of things you can... I think I'll, let's try that. Let's, let's try mm. pickled walnuts in there. There we go. Enrobed in black cow fondue. Mm. <clears throat> pretty good. So the revival of the fondue and the thing I love about this is you know we've utilized local stuff mm -hmm. okay the pickled walnuts aren't so local but they're British so we've got a great also all of these products are pretty unique there is <coughs> only one Dorset knob really there's only one Dorset knob there's only one do there's only one pickled walnut from Opie's and there's only one black cow pure milk vodka yeah so we have a unique Black cow fondue. And the, and the other good thing with the fondue, like you said, it's a very sociable thing, so this will last for hours. Yeah, yeah. You could even introduce a bit of meat into it. You could. You know, grill some little cubes of beef or pork, mm -hmm. dip those in. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think, you know, tradition is right, they, they, they kind of change it up a bit. So imagine if we grilled some little cubes of pork and then we whisked some mustard into it. Yeah. You know, so you change it for That'd be really a good. long fondue session. Yeah, I think my sister's got some pork coming on, so perhaps we could do that yeah. next time. 
good. Well, here's to uh, this cheesy weekender. It's a cheesy weekender. <laughs> mm. Cheers. Cheers.